Hello and thanks for joining me. Well, today I'm going to do a video on tapping. Uh, I'm going to discuss different kinds of tap handles, uh, guided, unguided, freehand, different types of taps, uh, advantages to one tap over the other, and uh, I, I don't know everything about tapping, but I'm sure I've got something to offer, and uh, maybe I'll learn something too. Well, let's get on with it. Okay, let's talk about the drill size first. There's all kinds of references on the internet. Uh, I've got a uh, old chart here to go by, but I'm tapping a uh, 5 sixteenths coarse thread, which is 18 threads per inch, and it recommends either an F drill or 257. Well, the next fractional size up from 257 is 9 30 seconds. And that's what I got here. Most of the time you're okay with going up the next fractional size. It'll make tapping the hole a little easier and not, not affect the strength at all. So, start out drilling a hole, appropriate size. Then, and you don't have to do this step, but it's a good idea to chamfer the hole with a countersink bit. What that does, it does two things. It makes the bolt easier to start and it makes the uh, tap wrench easier to, easier to start or the tap to tap in the hole easier to start. Now here's uh, a standard tap wrench. Here's another style. Uh, this one has a hole in the back. And that's for doing uh, this right here. It's for guiding the tap wrench. That ensures that that tap is straight in the hole. Okay, That's, that tap is going straight in there, and honestly I could take the guide out now and it would do just fine. This is the other option. And the advantage to this is you've got a lot of leverage. But you can also tap that hole crooked. If I don't get that started straight in there, which it is going straight now because I started it straight with a guide, but if I don't get that going straight in there, that can be a problem later if, if I'm assembling something. I'll show you what I mean. Take this drawing right here. I've got two holes. A set distance apart. I got the holes, a clearance hole drilled here and threaded holes in the bottom piece. And you can see what happens with that left side bolt. That's not going to go. I mean it's, it's going to be really difficult. Uh, now if you look at this next picture, if you're dealing with thin material, it really doesn't matter. What will happen is that bottom piece that you're threading into the threads will distort, or the yeah, the thread and the metal will distort, and the bolt will straighten up. So that's not a not a big deal. And it's the same if you're threading through thin stock. If if you've uh, got a slight misalignment, and it'll do the same thing with your clearance hole. The bolt will follow the crooked threads and enlarge the hole that you're uh, threading through. Uh, it's good to have good alignment, but sometimes it's just not critical. Before we move on to the types of taps, let me show you this. I made a video on this if you're interested. Uh, I'll put the link in the description area under the video. Uh, this one, you can leave the chamfering bit in the chuck and use the bit itself as a guide. 
It provides a lot more leverage, holds the tap securely. It's a, a driver that I made a handle for. Okay, here's the four taps we're going to discuss. Different styles of taps. This is what I would call a standard tap. Uh, if you look at the top one, it says uh, one to one and a half tapered threads. That means uh, one to one and a half threads that are tapered at the beginning to help you start that tap. It's called a bottoming tap. That means it'll tap to the very bottom of a hole. The next one down is a plug tap. And I don't know what, the, what that means exactly, but uh, it's got more taper on the end. Uh, it won't tap to the bottom of a hole, but it's a lot easier to get started. So you could start the hole with this and finish with the bottom tap. In fact, that's usually the easiest way to do it. Uh, this is a tapered tap. That's usually for through holes uh, where you're not concerned about tapping all the way to the bottom. And uh, it's, it's real easy to start. Okay, the next tap I'm going to talk about, I really like. But it's mostly for through holes. Uh, it's a spiral point tap. And it pushes the chips ahead of the tap. Now, if you go back to the other taps, the stand, what I call the standard taps, you have to reverse these taps. Uh, I think they recommend going one turn and then going back a half a turn or maybe it's a half a turn forward and one turn back. But anyway, it, it breaks the chips so that they don't uh, plug up the tap. With the spiral tap, it shoves all the chips ahead of the tap. And that's why you can't use it in a blind hole. And the next one that I haven't really used a lot. I have used them and they do work good. It's called a spiral flute tap. And I'm going to demonstrate that here in a minute. It sends the chips out the back of the hole. Uh, it's pretty interesting to watch. It requires a little bit less effort. Uh, you don't see these tapered very much. So if you're trying to use them unguided, sometimes it's hard to get it started and you have to use a regular tap to get these taps started. But uh, anyway, let's get on with demonstrating a few of these. Okay, one thing I didn't discuss with this spring-loaded tap guide. This is one I made so it kind of comes apart. They sell them commercially where that, where that pin stays captive in there. But what I don't like about it is when that's in the chuck like that, it can slip out from underneath that pin. Uh, may not seem like a big thing, but if you're tapping a whole bunch of holes, uh, and that slips out, you can break a tap. Uh, it's just inconvenient. So I'm going to use the tap, uh, tap wrench that I just got done making. Be sure and check out the video. Uh, this is a spiral tap that I'm using right here. Uh, it's always a good idea to use a little threading oil. Cutting oil rather. Doesn't take a whole lot. I want to show you what this one does. This is a spiral, spiral point tap. Now before I go any further, I want to show you what's underneath here. The shavings are coming out ahead of the tap. And that's, that's important if you're, if you're tapping a blind hole. That's not a good thing. All those chips end up in the bottom of your hole. Okay, now I've got a standard tapered tap. Remember that's uh, three to five threads that are tapered. Now this, in the, in the drill press, it's pretty easy to get started. It's really fairly easy anyway. But you have to go in reverse like that. And you'll feel the chips break it. Like right here, there's this tough spot and then it breaks the chips. If you pull that tap back out, all those chips are in the flute. They didn't go to the bottom. So that's, that's okay for a bottom tap. It gets to within three threads from the bottom of the hole. 
Okay, what I got in there now is a spiral flute tap. This is one of the more interesting things, more interesting taps. Look real close there. See the red's coming out? This is taking more effort than the spiral point tap. Spiral point tap to me is the best tap. However, if you're tapping to the bottom of a hole, this is a good alternative. And if you're in a big hurry and got a whole bunch of holes to tap, this is an alternative method. You may not have perfect alignment, but for some things that's, a, that's not a problem. Well, I didn't discuss about maybe one-tenth of what there is to know about taps. These are an H3 tap. Uh, that's the most common tap. That's a clearance. How loose the bolt fits. For most things that's totally adequate. Uh, in fact, I've never used anything uh, tighter tolerance. Don't need to. Anyway, thanks for joining me and be sure and subscribe and check out my other tap, tap handle video.